the Megalodon, world famous for being the most terrifying creature to have ever existed. Let's be glad it went extinct a long, long time ago, and hey, for once, it wasn't even our fault. But was Megalodon invincible? Or were there other creatures out there that even this giant was scared of? Let's find out. From the Lord of the Seas to the lizard with a mouth like a saw, here's the 20 biggest Megalodon enemies that ever existed. <sighs> Number 20, Thalassimodon. Scientists described this dinosaur in 1943 under the name Thamassilodon, which comes from the Greek word Thalassa, sea, and Medon lord or ruler, giving the meaning sea lord. With a total length of 10.8 meters for the holotype, Thalassimodon is one of the biggest elasimorids. However, there is a bigger skull that indicates a considerably larger animal, perhaps up to 11.6 meters in length, might have existed. The neck is also exceptionally long. It has 62 vertebrae and is around 5.9 meters long, making it more than half of the whole length. The teeth on the 47 centimeter long cranium measure 5 centimeters in length. The length of the flippers range from 4.9 to 1.5 meters. Some have speculated that the stones discovered in the stomach region of the animal were utilized for digesting or ballast. If the latter, the stones would pulverize ingested food due to the stomach's movement. About 95 million years ago, during the Cenomanian stage, this genius of plesiosaurs flourished in North America. Elasmosaurus is its nearest cousin. They're both from the elastomosauride family. In various American museums, there are six specimens on display in differing degrees of preservation. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Scientists working in secret in Japan have uncovered what they call the scariest creature of all time. In fact, when they first dusted off the fossilized bones, they all dropped their tools and ran screaming away from it. Only later did some more badass scientists dare to return, and what they found was insane. A giant eel with razors for teeth. This thing is considered to be an apex predator and was probably even more dangerous than the Megalodon. Even Megalodon was afraid of this creature. This was the boss of the sea. Do you think this eel could fight Megalodon? What's its best chance to win? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19, Temnodontosaurus. Temnodontosaurus, which translates as cutting tooth lizard in Greek, is a genus of prehistoric Ichthyosaurus that lived in the early Jurassic period. They inhabited Chile and regions of what's now Western Europe, specifically England, France, Luxembourg, Germany, and Belgium, between 200 and 175 million years ago. They made their homes in the open ocean's deepest reaches. Temnodontosaurus was referred to by the University of Bristol's paleontologist Jeremy Martin as one of the most ecologically disparate genre of Ichthyosaurus. The maximum length of Temnodontosaurus is estimated to be between 9 and 12 meters. The greatest of those estimations are comparable to the lengths of Shoniosaurus popularis, another enormous ichthyosaur that was once thought to be the biggest. Temnodontosaurus is renowned for having enormous eyes that measure around 20 centimeters in diameter, making them the biggest eyes of any known animal. It featured a tail bend that was typical of Jurassic ichthyosaurs, and its mouth was filled with many conical teeth that were positioned in a continuous groove. It was truly an apex predator in the early Jurassic oceans, most likely fish, pleiosaurs, and other ichthyosaurs made up the majority of its diet. It could have eaten cellulopods as well. This is the only Jurassic ichthyosaur genus for which a diet composed primarily of vertebrae has been suggested. Number 18, Basking Shark. The basking shark is the second largest shark in the ocean after the whale shark, and it inhabits warm, temperate coastal areas all over the world. The rotten carcasses of basking sharks, known as globsters, washing up on British and Japanese beaches have long been believed to be those of extinct plesiosaurs that were unknown to humanity. Recent developments in conspiracy theories have added to this tradition, with the rotten flesh of basking sharks thought to be that of sea monsters. The oil, food, and leather from these sluggish, non-aggressive sharks has long been valuable, but the species is now endangered and protected in a number of countries. The basking shark may have attracted the attention of hunters since it has the smallest size to brain ratio of any shark. They're probably a touch slow to pick things up because they're not exactly the shark world, Einstein. Does the world's smartest shark exist? It's the great white shark, in fact, which is occasionally mistaken for a basking shark. Number 17. 
Protoxyrhina. One of the biggest sharks and a fearsome predator in the late Cretaceous seas was the Cretoxyrhina. With a mouthful of razor-sharp, bone-shearing teeth, Cretoxyrhina, sometimes known as the Ginzu shark, tore apart its prey. Ginzu is a type of kitchen knife that slices and dices food. Evidence reveals that the formidable predator Cretoxyrhina preyed on mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, and even the enormous bony fish, Zephactinus. Cretoxyrhina was one of the biggest sharks of its day, growing up to 8 meters in length and weighing more than 4,944 kilograms. It was an apex predator in its environment and preyed on a wide range of marine species, including mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, sharks and other huge fish, petrosaurs, and even dinosaurs. It had similarities with the present great white shark in terms of appearance and structure. Its razor-like teeth, which could reach a length of 8 centimeters, had thick enamel design for slicing and stabbing. Hydrodynamic simulations imply that the Crotoxy rhino shark is among the quickest swimmers, reaching burst speeds of up to 70 km per hour. It's been hypothesized that Crotoxyrhina depended on a keen vision to hunt by lunging at its prey at fast speeds to deliver devastating strikes. This method is similar to that of modern great white sharks. In Kansas, several fossils of Crotoxyrhina skeletons with extraordinary preservation have been found since the late 19th century. Vertebrae from a few of the bones have been used in studies to successfully compute the life history of the animal. Number 16. Mosasaurus. Yes, this dino is the hero from the Jurassic Park film series. The Squamata suborder of extinct aquatic creatures includes the genus Mosasaurus. These aquatic creatures are thought to have existed between 82 and 66 million years ago, during the Campanian and Maastrichtian eras of the late Cretaceous period. The skull fossil, which was found near Maastricht in the late 18th century, was the first ever example of these marine reptiles. The question of whether these prehistoric reptiles were closely related to the snake or lizard family has been the subject of unending discussion. But George Cuvet, considered the pioneer of paleontology, determined in 1808 that they indeed shared characteristics with current-day monitor lizards and snakes. The fossilized remains of these mosasaurs have been discovered in North America, Antarctica, South America, Europe, and Africa. Additionally, the mosasaur was an apex predator with teeth meant to rip into the flesh of food like fish, even sharks, and other mosasaurs. It also had a skull made for crushing. They consumed a wide variety of foods, including seabirds, sharks, marine reptiles, and other mosasaurs. Number 15. Helicoprion. Since the Helicoprion went extinct around 250 million years ago, humans no longer need to be concerned about this enormous predator when swimming in coastal waters. Scientists have been able to piece together a fascinating image of the Helicoprion, using the fossil records and some significant recent finds. Researchers came to the conclusion that the enormous fish may reach a maximum size of 12 meters, which is twice the size of a great white shark. A specimen of this size was discovered in Idaho. The helicoprion's jaw and teeth are another remarkable feature, and it's these features that earned it the name the buzzsaw shark. For many years, the mystery surrounding the whirl of teeth that resembled a buzzsaw persisted as attempts were made to reconstruct the creature from these few remains. The whirl was placed in a number of different locations on the fish's body before it was finally determined in 2013 that it was a peculiar protrusion from the lower jaw that allowed this species to catch and eat prey more readily. Despite being closely related, they were able to determine that the Heliocorpion was a type of ratfish rather than a shark. However, this rat, shark, monster, whatever it turned out to have been, was the largest and most successful predator of the seas during its lifetime, in addition to being one bizarre looking fish. Number 14. Tylosaurus. The greatest predator of the prehistoric oceans, Tylosaurus was ready to pounce and slay near any smaller animal that got in its way. Its jaws were really jaws of death. Lined on either side were two rows of sharp cone-shaped teeth. Tylosaurus utilized its snout to identify food, which it then devoured whole once inside the beast's lethal jaws. Two additional rows of teeth on the top of the sea monster's mouth prevented the prey from escaping as it expanded wide for the final swallow. Tylosaurus was one of the biggest marine carnivores of its day, and was an apex predator that preyed on the diverse marine flora in its environment. The genus, which also includes other mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, turtles, birds, bony fish, and sharks, has a well-documented history of its fossilized stomach contents. 
Bite marks and other information indicate that the animal also preyed on the gigantic squid and ammonites. In 1987, a discovery revealed fossils of a mosasaur measuring two meters or longer and contained the diving bird Hesperonis, a bananomious fish, and possibly a shark all within the stomach of a single skeleton found in the Pierre Shale of North Dakota. Fossils of Tylosaurus that had been injured by another of their own species suggest that the animal's interactions with one another were primarily hostile. Number 13. Tychotus As its teeth are designed to shatter shells rather than rip through flesh, Tychotus was one of the most specialized sharks in the late Cretaceous waters. As a result, the teeth are rounded rather than the trapezoidal and sharp shape, and the surface of the crown has many ridges. These ridges would have enhanced the bite pressure over their whole length, aiding in the retention of shellfish with smooth shells and concentrating the bite pressure on critical sections. The name of the shark, which is a combination of the words tyke, which means fold or layer, and dus, which means tooth, was really inspired by the ridges that give the teeth a folded look. Tychotus was a molluscivore predator that preyed on the enormous crustaceans and bivalves that lived in the western interior seaway. The only foods that the Tychotus could maneuver into its mouth were likely slow-moving or sessile shells, mollusks, invertebrates, larvae, and the odd submerged carrion of crustaceous megafauna. With its crushing mouth, Tychodus could have easily broken through the nine-foot plasioramus of the biggest bivalves at the time. Those tough mollusks would have been a challenging meal for any other animal. Number 12. Liopleurodon Liopleurodon, like many other prehistoric creatures found in the 19th century, was given its name based on a relatively limited amount of fossil evidence. Exactly three teeth, each about three inches long, that were discovered in 1873 during the excavation of a French town. The name is derived from Greek and means smooth-sided teeth. Most people's first introduction to this aquatic lizard was in 1999 when the BBC included it in its famous Walking with Dinosaurs TV series. A more fair estimate of Liopleurodon's length is 30 feet, but the show creators gave it a massively inflated length of nearly 80 feet. As pliosaurs often possessed unusually large heads compared to the rest of their bodies, Walking with Dinosaurs appeared to have made an error by extrapolating from the size of its skull. Pleurodon has four robust paddle-like arms, which suggests it was an adept swimmer. All plesiosaurs move with four flippers as their means of propulsion. Although this kind of propulsion is not particularly effective, research using swimming robots has shown that it delivers extremely good acceleration, a desired quality in an ambush predator. Studies on the skull have revealed that it could presumably use its nose to scan the water to identify the source of certain odors. Number 11. Pacific Sleeper Shark the Pacific Sleeping Shark is a huge shark found in the Pacific Ocean. It's a member of the Squalidae family of dogfish sharks, which is part of the Squaliformes order, along with rough sharks and bramble sharks. Somniosus pacificus is the formal name for the Pacific Sleeper Shark. Despite inhabiting different seas than the Greenland shark, some experts suggest that this shark could be the same species. The gray or brownish body of the Pacific Sleeper Shark is hefty and cylindrical. It lacks an anal fin, but it has two equally sized dorsal fins, or top fins. The strong frontal spine observed in certain other sharks is absent from the dorsal fins. Dermal denticles, which resemble tiny teeth with hooked cusps, cover the side of the body, giving the skin a bristly appearance. Short and rounded, so is the nose. The smaller lance-shaped top teeth likewise have a single cusp, while the lower blade-like teeth have a single cusp that slants sharply to the side. The Pacific Sleeper is a large shark that may grow to be at least 20 feet long, so it might be a sleeper, but don't think about napping while this monster is nearby. Number 10. Tiger Shark the only remaining member of the genus Galeocerdo, which includes all requiem sharks, is the tiger shark. It's a massive macro predator that may become as long as 5 meters. Populations can be found in many tropical and temperate waters, especially on the islands in the Central Pacific. Its name comes from the black stripes that run down its body and resemble a tiger stripes. These stripes fade as the shark ages. Tiger sharks are lone nocturnal predators. It's well known for having the widest diet of any shark, eating anything from crustaceans to fish to seals, birds, squid, turtles, sea snakes, dolphins, and even other sharks. It's sometimes referred to as a trash eater since it consumes a variety of inedible man-made objects that pass through its stomach. Despite tiger sharks being apex predators, killer whale pods will occasionally hunt tiger sharks. It's considered a near-threatened species as a result of human fishing and finning. Tiger sharks seldom bite humans. However, they are one of the most dangerous shark species and are thought to be involved in a considerable percentage of fatal shark bites. 
They frequently visit ports, canals, and shallow reefs where they encounter humans. Three to four shark bites are reported in Hawaii each year, however they're seldom fatal. Bethany Hamilton, a surfing champion, is one notable survivor who lost her left arm to a tiger shark in 2003 when she was just 13 years old. The daily number of swimmers, surfers, and divers in Hawaiian waters make this bite rate pretty low, however. But one's enough to keep me on dry land, thanks all the same. Number 9. Edestus a particular kind of ancient shark, known as Edestus, lived approximately 300 million years ago during the late Carboniferous period. It was first found in the middle of the 19th century, and Joseph Leedy eventually gave it the name Edistus in 1855. The scissor tooth shark is yet another name for it. The images of Edistus make it abundantly clear why these sharks were among the strangest marine animals ever. It weighed around 2 tons and was roughly 20 feet long. Its head was formed like a dolphin, and its tooth-lined mouth resembled a pair of pinking shears, which are scissors with a serrated edge rather than a smooth one. Numerous theories on the function of the tooth whorls have been put forth because of the peculiar nature of the whorls and the historical scarcity of cranial evidence. Early theories proposed that they were either fin-mounted, protective spines, or teeth. Due to the skeleton's cartilage, poor potential for fossilization, preserved skeletal material is uncommon, as it is with a majority of cartilaginous fish. The most significant of these specimens is FMNH PF2204, a crushed juvenile specimen that's most likely a representative of Edestus Henrici. Not the coolest name, I'd have called it Barney or something. Anyway, it shows both the upper and lower blades, in addition to well-preserved condocranium and jaws. Number 8. Atodus oblicus. Sharks develop and shed millions of teeth over their lifespan, which is why they're so plentiful in the fossil record. Because shark skeletons are made of biodegradable cartilage rather than more durable bone, the teeth are sometimes the only remnants of extinct species in the fossil record. That was the case with the early Cenozoic Atodus, whose enormous, sharp triangular teeth indicate a full-grown adult size of up to 8 meters. However, we know frustratingly little else about this prehistoric shark, other than it probably preyed on ancient whales, other smaller sharks, and the plentiful prehistoric fish that were present at the time. Atoptodus' biggest claim to fame, besides its petrified teeth, is that it appears to have been a direct ancestor of the Megalodon, the 50-foot-long, 50-ton predatory giant that controlled the waters till the dawn of the modern age. This isn't to take away from Atotus' own place in history. This ancient shark was at least 1.5 times larger than the largest great white sharks now swimming. By comparing the similarities between the two sharks' teeth, paleontologists have discovered this evolutionary connection. In particular, the teeth of Atotus display early indications of the flesh-ripping serrations that would subsequently distinguish the teeth of a megalodon. Number 7. Ichthyosaurus a sea animal called the Ichthyosaurus lived in the early Jurassic era. Its existence is thought to have started between 190 and 180 million years ago. This belongs to the Jurassic period, namely the Cinemurian through the Pleistocene ages. It's thought that, like other Ichthyosaur species, it developed from land-dwelling reptiles. It looked like some of those dinosaurs, despite the fact that it had a phenotypic appearance that was remarkably similar to current fish like sharks. They were significantly different from fish skeletons. Compared to other Ichthyosaurids, the Ichthyosaurus Ichthyosaurus was significantly smaller in size. It reached a mature length of 5.8 to 6 feet approximately. However, some Ichthyosaurus grew as long as 30 feet in the body. In the early 1800s, such remnants were discovered in England. It may have been widespread in the waters surrounding England and the Atlantic Ocean, according to scientists. Number 6. Liviatan. Leviathan lived up to its biblical reputation as the largest prehistoric whale ever and a rival for the enormous shark Megalodon in terms of weight. The name Leviathan, which refers to the terrifying sea monster from the Old Testament, seems more than fitting for a large ancient whale. The problem is that immediately after scientists gave their finding its name in 2010, they discovered it's already been used for a genus of mastodon that had been established a full century earlier. Their shortcut was to use the Hebrew spelling, Leviathan, in place of the other spelling, even though for all intents and purposes, most people still call this whale by the original name. Paleontologists estimate that Leviathan was around the size of a current sperm whale, measuring upwards of 50 feet from head to tail and weighing as much as 50 tons, extrapolating from a 10-foot-long cranium. This made Leviathan, which lived around 13 million years ago, by far the largest predatory whale of the Mysosome period, and it would have been assured of its place at the top of the food chain. Except for the similarly enormous ancient shark, our old friend Megalodon. Number 5. Sarcosuchus Imperator 
It was one of the biggest reptiles in the crocodile lion family, growing to an average estimated length of 9.5 meters and a maximum estimated weight of 4.3 metric tons. Other evidence is known from Morocco and Tunisia, and there's ongoing digs in Libya and Mali. Its name? Sarcophagus Imperator. Sounds pretty badass. The first bones were found in the Sahara between 1946 and 1959, after multiple trips directed by the French scientist Albert Félix de la Perrante. These remains included pieces of teeth, scutes, vertebrae, and cranium. A nearly complete skull was discovered in Niger by the French CEA in 1946, but it wasn't until an expedition led by American paleontologist Paul Sereno in 1997 and 2000 that the majority of its anatomy was made known to science. One of these specimens had about half the skeleton and most of the spine still intact. Scientists hypothesized that S. Imperator had a generalized diet similar to a Nile croc, which would have included large terrestrial prey like the numerous dinosaurs that lived in the same region. They based their hypothesis on the broader snout of a fully grown S. Imperator, when compared to the living gharial and other narrow-snouted crocodiles, as well as a lack of interlock. Sarcosuchus, unlike Deinosuchus, may not have been able to execute the death roll movement employed by living crocodilians to dismember their victims, according to a 2014 examination of a biomechanical model of its head. That applies that if S. Imperator did hunt large animals, it likely didn't dismember its prey in the same way that living crocodilians do. In any case, it was by far the largest crocodile known to have existed, dwarfing all other crocodiles, gators, and caimans in size. Number 4. Cetetherium One of the earliest members of the Mysticeti, or baleen whales as they're more popularly known, is Cetetherium. The early whales were predators, using their sharp teeth to grab and devour other aquatic animals like fish and even other mammals. Later whales like Cytotherium evolved baleen to filter minute creatures from the sea. They also diversified to benefit from a new food supply. Due to being tiny, these creatures would have been caught in sufficient numbers to give such a big beast enough food. Cytotherium would have remained quite close to the ocean surface, where its primary food supply would be. Despite its immensity, this body of water was extremely dangerous to be in since it included the incredibly enormous predators like the Megalodon and even other whales like the Leviathan. A strong indication that these predators would dive down to great depths before looking up at their intended prey, which would have been silhouetted against the light of the surface, comes from compression damage to the spine of certain whales. The widely held belief is that the predator would slam into the whale's belly at a high rate of speed, injuring the vertebrae as they collided with the arc from the collision and the whale, startled or exhausted, would be powerless to flee. With this in mind, it's conceivable that whales like Cytotherium, which absorbed large quantities of tiny animals like krill before being devoured by the top predators, might have served as an intermediary link in the marine food chain. Number 3. Tusta Tuthis A massive Enchotuthine cephalopod genus, called Tusta Tethys, which means crush squid, is now extinct and existed during the Cretaceous. Although it was once thought of as a squid, modern octopuses are now believed to be its relative. Gladius fossils have shown an estimated mantle length that's comparable or equal to that of a contemporary giant squid. Parts of North America's former western interior seaway have been found to contain fossil remains, including late Cretaceous rocks in Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, and the Manitoba province. T. longa, one species, is known historically. It's believed that Tusatethus preyed on fish, other cephalopods, and perhaps even tiny marine reptiles. Other creatures, particularly the many diverse predatory fish of the western interior seaway, also preyed on Tusatethus. A fossil of the predatory Allopiform semocycus was discovered with the gladius of a T. longa in its gullet. The fish may have perished while still trying to swallow the cephalopod tail first because of the back section of the gladius in the stomach area, and the mouth of the C. nepaholica was still open. Researchers have a strong suspicion that the fish suffocated Tistatuthus while it was being ingested because the head and or tentacles were outside the mouth and blocked the fish's gills. Number 2. Orca The largest member of the family of oceanic dolphins is a toothed whale known as the killer whale. It's easy to identify thanks to its body's black and white striped pattern. Killer whales consume a wide range of animals, with certain populations specializing on particular kinds of prey. Some just consume fish, while others engage in seal and dolphin hunting. They've been reported to attack adult whales, as well as calf baleen whales. Killer whales are apex predators because they lack natural predators. Killer whales in the wild do not view people as a threat, and no fatal attack
attacks on humans have ever been documented. Orcas kept in cages at marine theme parks have been known to harm or kill their keepers. Native American stories frequently feature killer whales, and different civilizations have variously characterized them as terrible killers or creatures with human souls. Western society has always seen the killer whales as ferocious, lethal predators. Due to rivalry with fishermen, killer whales were also considered to be a nuisance. The governments of the Pacific Northwest and Iceland condoned and even supported the slaughter of killer whales. The U.S. Navy claimed to killed hundreds of killer whales in Icelandic waters in 1956 using machine guns, rockets, and depth charges. Number 1. Great White Shark the world's ocean surface waters are home to the enormous great white shark, which is a kind of mackerel shark. It's renowned for its size, with the tallest females at a length of 6.1 meters. Great white sharks may live for up to 70 years or more, making them one of the longest living cartilaginous fish in the world, according to a 2014 study. In rare circumstances, the killer whale is the sole known predator of the great white shark. Fish and seagulls are among the things that have been observed being eaten by this shark. In Steven Spielberg's film Jaws, the great white shark is portrayed as a vicious man-eater. But humans aren't a preferred source of food for the great white shark. That's fantastic news for those of you listening to this at the beach. There's no known aquariums in the world that are thought to hold a live specimen of the great white shark, since it's logistically hard to maintain them in captivity, due to their requirement to travel huge distances for seasonal migration and their very specialized diet. Which of these sea monsters do you think is the toughest of all time? Is Megalodon overrated? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff that's showing up on screen right now. See you next time.